One application of lines and the equation of lines comes from a scatter plot and trying to decide the trend and direction of that scatter plot. In this video, we're going to look specifically at a scatter plot. And what a scatter plot is, is it's a graph of points. We're not going to connect the points. We're just going to graph the points. And I want to recall, as we graph these points, with the x, y point, x is the direction we move right or left if it's negative. And y is the direction that we move up or down if the point is negative. So example one here, I've got four points that can be graphed on a line. I'm going to go ahead and draw a coordinate plane here. Vertical being the, X, the y and the horizontal being your x's. And let's see if we can graph these points. The first point is 2 comma 4. That means we're going to go 2 to the right and up 4, and we'll make our point. The second point is 1 comma 6. So we'll go 1 to the right and 6 up. The third point is 4 comma 1. So we'll go 4 to the right and up 1. The final point on here is 3, comma 3. So I will go 3 to the right and 3 up. And we end up with the scatter plot of points. They're almost on a straight line. And with scatter plots, we're not using an equation to make the points. We usually run some type of experiment or observe some situation occurring and end up with these points that kind of go in a direction. And that's what we're going to be interested in, is how can we graph that line that shows the general trend of the point. But like I said, for now, we're just looking at the scatter plot, just making the points. Now, with example two here, you'll see the numbers go much bigger than 6. Uh, the numbers go all the way up to 55. So we'll need to adjust our scale a bit to make this work. What I'm going to do is on the x-axis, I'm going to go by 3. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. And that should be enough to cover all of our data points. But on the y-axis going up, we have to get much higher, all the way up to 60. And so to kind of help us out, I'm going to put a break in the axis. And then we'll start counting at 30. And we'll do 35, 40, 45, 50, 55 going up. So now when I graph the first point, 538, there's going to be a little bit of estimating. Because 5 is going to be somewhere between 3 and 6, but closer to the 6. And 38 is going to be close to the 40, but maybe not quite there. But when I eyeball that, it's going to end up right around this point here to the left of 6 and below 40 for our first point. Our next point is 8, 45. So 8 is kind of to the left of 9. 45 is right on that center line. So we'll go up and get that point. The next point is 11, 51. So we'll go to 11, and 51 is just above the 50. And we get a point right there. And for our final point, it's 14, 55. 14 is just to the left of 15, and 55 is all the way up at the top. And we get these points. These points look like they're almost on a perfect line. That does not always happen with scatter plots. Sometimes they're more spread out. And that's going to be something we'll investigate further as we go through this video series.